The 480 manages VR performance at $200, which is what it set out to do. So why are so many people disappointed? Clearly, hype plays a large part. Before its launch, AMD promised that Polaris would be a revolutionary leap in efficiency and performance. For the price point, and the 480 is certainly a lot better than the 380 before it, which it should be. It's got double the RAM, a smaller fabrication process, a new design, and months of hype behind it. AMD's mid-range 80 series was long due for a major improvement, and the 480 at least makes it a viable option for gamers on a budget again. But ultimately, it's still just a $200 graphics card, and although it might offer more for this price than ever before, we've seen this level of performance before from AMD. Twice. First with the 290X, and then again with their 390. Every time, the price goes down. First it was $550, next $330. It now makes sense that the 480 is less again at just $200. But is it any wonder that people fail to get excited about the same performance a third time, even at a low price? Is it worth $200 for a card that was top range three years ago? And how long will this level of performance be able to handle games for? And let's not forget that right now, even though it's the best all round choice for its price, it's still not a total knockout. There's still the odd game where it'll underperform against one from Nvidia, or even against older AMD cards. And this problem has been compounded by review sites coming to different conclusions about the card. For every site saying it performs well, another will contradict it and say it performs poorly. At the moment it looks like this is down to the drivers being used, but regardless of the reason, it isn't helping anybody that the 480's performance hasn't been universally agreed upon just yet. There's a silver lining here. AMD's cards have aged well in the past, thanks to their ability to squeeze more and more performance with driver updates. For all we know, the 480 could end up being significantly faster than it is right now, and there will be much rejoicing by owners of the card everywhere. But this is all in the future there's no guarantee that this will even happen. Right now, the card is being reviewed with its current performance, as it rightfully should be. And for now, overclocking is also disappointing. Reference cards seem starved for power, they run hot and overclock poorly. These are all things that could be remedied with custom 480s, but once again we're relying on the future for improvements, rather than accepting the state it's in right now. And what about the power consumption in general? This was a major step up in Polaris, according to AMD's excited looking previews. Problem is, even with the jump to a 14 nanometer process, it's still only on par with the GeForce 900 series, and less efficient than their newer 1000 cards. In fact, the only thing it really beats are AMD's previous generations. Don't get me wrong, Polaris's efficiency is definitely a step in the right direction, but it only begins to level the playing field with Nvidia, and highlights how much worse AMD previously was in this regard. I think a lot of us were hopeful that the 480 would surpass the expectations and promises, because AMD has managed it before, back in 2008 with the release of the Radeon 4850 and 70. At the time, these were AMD's highest performing single cards. They ran games like a dream and priced at just $200 and $300 respectively, easily beat cards well above their price points. Plus with the exchange rates back then, $200 became something like £125 for us here in England, compared with the 480's release price starting at £170 for the cheapest 4GB model. I know it's not fair to compare this launch with the legendary 4850, since a lot has changed in the past 8 years, and we've left the EU, but I think a lot of people were hoping to see the same again from AMD. The 480 is a good choice, but it simply doesn't scream buy me in the same way as those cards did. And although the future might be kind to the 480, right now its worst enemies are older and second hand cards, which will no doubt be available for a while at competitive prices for those disinterested in the power efficiency and future improvements that the 480 might deliver. AMD are partly to blame for the hype surrounding the card. They were the ones who handpicked the benchmarks and stats to wow us with before its launch, and it's not as if they lied about those very specific and cherry picked details. But with the absence of higher end cards, the 480 alone had to fulfil all of our expectations, which is more than any mid range card could possibly deliver on. Besides, when have we ever gotten excited about the launch of 80s cards in the past? Impressive performance has always been the 90s cards area of expertise, and it's these that we've all dreamt of having, even if at the end of the day most of us end up getting an 80 because we're poor. Yet despite all this, I think that this will be remembered as a successful launch. The 480, in its large quantities, will become a common and respected graphics card for gamers on a budget. It will lower the barrier of entry for those wanting to experience high resolution and VR displays, and it will usher in a new age of peace and tranquility that… no, it won't do the last bit, let's not get on the hype train again just yet, but it's certainly a success that AMD needed in order to claw back market share from Nvidia and to prepare for the coming storm that is the GeForce 1060. Many of us have been holding off upgrading for far too long. Some of us even sold our cards in preparation for this launch, and as always, if only this card had been slightly more powerful, efficient or cheaper, then we'd all have been a lot happier. If only the 480 could definitely have outclassed the older 390 cards, or gone toe to toe with a formidable GeForce 980, maybe some of us are questioning whether it's been worth the wait, to save $100 or so by getting the 480 rather than a 970 or 390 a year ago. 
Have all those lost frames we've endured been worth it? Will this card even be able to run tomorrow's games at high settings? We're just going to have to make do with this card's performance for now, and rely on AMD's reputation for being able to squeeze more performance out of the cards as time goes on. Maybe the 480 will become a great investment, with its generous 8GB of RAM and new, improved architecture being enough to power games for years to come. And here's hoping for new software features too. You know what I'm talking about. You see this? This wouldn't have been possible to record using AMD's Play.TV, which only works in certain applications. Shadowplay has 60fps, 4K support at the click of a button. It's spoilt me since it's perfect in its simplicity and compatibility, and until AMD can offer the same, I'm afraid that their cards are out of the question, as somebody like me who produces content can't justify sacrificing a tool as flexible and as efficient as Shadowplay. Please AMD, stop ignoring people who are in my situation. There are dozens of us.